Hey, Mark Warnke here. Um, so on kind of the life setting thing, hunting thing, and you know, goat stuff, farmy, ranchy folks, irrelevant. This, by the way, is now been aged. This is the, you've heard of eye of the round or whatever, that's that cut off of an elk. And remember, I pack out with goats, so I have to court, I have to bone and butcher in the field. So this is a piece of meat that came out as a third of the, of the rear quarter. And this has been aged now for 21 days in our dry, dry aged in our cooler. We kept humidity right, we kept five mile an hour wind, and we kept uh, the temperature uh, at about 36 to 34 degrees for 21 days. It actually grew a crust and has white, nice mold on it. And what's really interesting is you just peel off the thing, and then you got these super delicious tender steaks underneath. Now you do get some loss. If I would say there's any negative of it, it's that you lose some meat because you're you're literally dehydrating and you got to cut off all the outside layers. Um, so you only do it on the relevant pieces that you're going to butcher. Uh, but we've already cooked it up. We've sampled some of it. It's tender. It's delicious. I would say it's more flavorful and it's definitely more tender. I'm going to quickly show you what it looks like to pull off um, to pull off the crust, just so you get an idea of that. And, and it's easy to always keep the mold side on the cutting board and keep the piece that you're you're working on free but like you know when you when you cut off that piece of mold you know you you literally have just delicious red steak underneath and so you lose that piece you know you you literally have to and and this is not the best example piece to do this on um, but you can see that you know you lose about an eighth of an inch Kind of like a little thin piece of jerky but then you just cut it off you get the whole entire outside layer off and then you butcher it up just like normal so super cool um the dry aging experiment this is the ending process um the steaks have been delicious and i would say it was a success um so we're super stoked about it this is the end product i've cooked now two two different steaks out of it this was out of the eye of the round which really is a non-premium cut this is a this is not an ideal butt steak at all it's always super chewy and not yummy and i mean it's okay i get them but you know your mouth gets sore chewing them this is we just cooked it up so freaking good almost almost fork tender out of the eye of the round so hey mark super, can you get cassidy good. cred for cooking cassidy <laughs> our in-house awesomeness cooker extraordinaire <laughs> cooked a badass steak too so um yeah so anyway if you have the luxury of the right room and space and all that stuff and i did a video on the actual uh unit that we built as well the walk-in cooler and how we have to air conditioner and all that fun stuff to get this done delish um super good i highly suggest it yummy as a part of the whole life setting and goat stuff, my, my expertise is in goats, but I've been farming, ranching, uh, homesteading, and that sort of thing most of my life. And so now we are starting to really get next level and doing the things that I always wanted to do because we have a large enough property and enough capital and manpower and time and energy to really start setting up a piece of ground. And so I wanted to talk to you today about our cooling system. Um, now, one of the problems here, and I live in Idaho, and we elk hunt in September, when we get meat home, uh, it's, you know, not uncommon to have it be 90 degrees midday. And if you bring an elk home from the field and it's 90 degrees, well, where are you going to keep it cool? Because I process my own meat. I don't use a butcher. And so I've always struggled with finding a way. Sometimes I've had refrigerators. I've poured all the shelves out of them, and then I put it in the refrigerator, but even that ends up being a useless refrigerator except for that and it gets bloody and it's just this nightmare of a situation that's really difficult to overcome. So this year I said, hey, let's build a refrigeration system using an air conditioner and there's, there's hacks out there that show you how to do this. There's actually a little electronic budget, a bug, it, or I mean a, um, an electronic kind of little thing that you buy and it's a couple hundred bucks though that will help to do it for you, or you can actually know enough on electronics to do it on your own and you hack 
the air conditioner to think it's different temperatures than it is. And my hired man, Kelsum, is just brilliant. And he he's the one that kind of did that system and knows it in detail. Um, and uh, so we used an air conditioner to create a walk-in cooler. Now this, I'm big on efficiency and insulation. So everything in this is crazy insulated. It's two by six walls. It has um, insulation uh, of, you know, normal fiberglass insulation in there. And then on the inside has that one inch dense foam that allowed us to kind of lock the whole system in as well. So we have an incredible, it's probably like R50 insulation. And not only on the walls, but in the ceiling and the floor. So this little box itself, and I think he said he used eight tubes of caulking to lock the whole thing in, in terms of allowing in outside moisture and air, which is really critical for what I'm gonna to explain to you next, which is the dry aging process. Um, so it kinda, our process went like this. We went, okay, I wanna be able to cool meat when I get home, so when I get home, I don't have to butcher right away. Cause if you don't know this, if an, if an animal is in rigor mortis, which happens for about 48 hours, and you butcher in that 48 hours, you freeze that rigor mortis into the meat and it becomes super tough. So you have to have it at least 48 hours of aging. When, and then when you begin to age for longer, what ends up happening, if you control three components, which is humidity, airflow, and temperature, then you can create an environment called dry aging. And the ultimate, and I, and I literally got on the phone with one of the United States leading authorities on dry aging, and the diminishing return starts at about 21 days. So you can dry age if you control five miles an hour in wind, you keep it between 33 and 40 degrees. We picked 36 and we are 36 degrees and you control the humidity, which the ultimate humidity is like 75, uh, a humidity rating of 75, whatever it is, I can't remember now, but anyway, what happens is the air conditioning unit draws humidity out of there. So it's a very non-humid environment. Because we make the fan run, if you just heard that, I don't know if you heard the difference in that, that was the compressor. So while we're talking, that's the first time the compressor has come on. It comes on only literally a couple of times a day because this is so well insulated. And it'll come on for a little bit, but mostly all it's running is the fan. And the fan's what's moving air for the meat. And that's what's really important in the dry aging process. So you have to move air, you have to keep constant temperature and you need low humidity. 21 days is the mark of diminishing returns because what ends up happening, and I'm gonna show you the inside because I got elk that we're gonna butcher tonight that's at 21 days right now. What happens is the piece of meat forms a crust and they call it bark in the industry. And that crust is about that thick. It's really thin. You do lose some meat, but not a lot. And it's about that much that you have to take off, but it literally forms a black crust and then mold develops on top, both almost all singly white mold. And you cut that off and then what's underneath, because of the enzymatic activity in the meat, it's become far more tender. It's also shrunk a bit so that it's, it's a more dense tender and it's more flavorful because it's packed more of that flavor in a small package. And I can tell you because we already took one to fruition, we've cooked it, I'll never do an elk another way. It is amazing. So I highly recommend it. It took, I think it ended up costing us between insulation and all the crazy building costs right now. So in case you're watching this video in the future, this is, this is uh, October of 2022. Um, and so we're still dealing with the crazy costs of plywood and all that stuff. So we spent about 600 bucks building this in total. And um, uh, we have this now forever. Not only is it a cooler that we can utilize, it's also a dry ager. And I wanna show you what the dry aging looks like on the inside. Now, this, this process is how we make this happen. And you can see this is an old junker. This was a freebie air conditioner that we got. And this process is the process of the hacking mechanism to make this air conditioner not be able to stop because it reaches cold temperatures. Usually most air conditioners will turn off because they have like a freeze guard. This system makes it not do that. And so it's necessary to know how to do this component and they call it like a freeze buddy or something that you can buy that does it for you automatically. 
But if we go inside, here's what stuff looks like. So this is stuff that's only been in here now for about a week. So this stuff has been in here for about a week. You can see it barely is starting with little spots of mold. It's starting to turn black. It's starting to dehydrate. That's the early process. And the bigger hunks of meat you can put in here, the better. Now remember, it would be best if I have a big elk quarter in here, but I pack out on goats. And so I, I have to break my meat down. And that ends up being a negative in this process because the more surface area, the more you have to take off. But in a big hunk of meat, luckily we have a goat like Noah, I could put that on one side and then it's equal on the other side. And I was able to pack that whole thing out on just one goat. So that allowed me a big hunk of meat. So that's kind of one that is, and we already butchered all the burger off this. This is all stuff that we're gonna turn into steaks. We still get burger out of it, but this is the steak portions um, because you don't wanna dry edge your burger. There's no use to do it. You have meat loss and you don't need to tenderize it. So you just butcher that right away after you get it cooled down, usually 48 to 64 hours after I'll do burger. Now this side, Shay, if you wanna step in here, this side is where you get to see what it turns into in 21 days. And you can see this is, this is literally mold. And it's white, white, and it's in, it's, it's, I heard, and I haven't verified this, that it's penicillin mold. Um, but I don't know that for a fact. But this stuff now has been aged for 21 days. And you can see it's all, the air's moving. Um, this is what the inside of this thing looks like. You can see he's got a light bulb in here that keeps one of the sensors warmer than it actually is. That's part of the hacking mechanism. Here's the temperature sensor. Um, so that's what it is. And then you can see how we taped and put in all the sealing aspects in here that work, work super, super good. So this is it. You could hang this as well, but we chose to go ahead and put it on grates. And um, it's just really cool. I'm super proud of it. So let's step out of here because it's kind of loud. Um, and that's the other nice thing. So you can hear this. This is giving us an alarm now that's saying this is at a higher temperature. So we actually have something that'll tell us if we have issues as well. And so let's step away from this so it's not so loud. So fun to report kind of the process of this. Um, this is the first time that I've created it. And I will tell you that I don't feel like there was any big mistakes that we made that I wish I would have done differently. Our size was about right. And what our goal was, was to optimize materials. So you can see it took exactly two four by eight sheets on the outside and one four by eight sheet on the other side. So we're four by eight by eight um, by eight. And that's the space inside. And we've successfully cooled and dry aged three elk in there this year. So I can't see how really any family would overwhelm the dimensions that we made. And the other thing is I built it structurally so that the, so that the top of it would become a shelf as well so we didn't lose that space in our tractor barn. So, um, and also no, this thing's been running the whole time in the month of September since we got our first bull, which was actually mid-September yeah, mid, mid, mid to early, like the 10th or the 12th is when we killed that first bull. And um, we've had 100 degree heat con pretty consistently, not 100, but like 95 and stuff consistently throughout the month of September down here in the valley. So did you see, by the way, the alarm just went off? So that's how quickly it recovered back down below the premium temperature, which we set the alarm to go off at 40. Anything sub 40 degrees is where it needs to be to keep meat safe long-term in this kind of environment. So you can see that that air conditioner can cool down that room like super quick. Um, so that's the dry ager. Um, uh, I hope you find that information helpful and maybe you're able to apply it on your lifestead or homestead someday. 
Um, give us a like, give us a share, share this with your friends, leave a comment, tell us what you like about it, what you'd like us to do more. I'm known as the goat guy. That's where my expertise is. If you need any help with goats, uh, goats, I have a goat club membership and courses and everything that you can find on packgoats.com. And then as well, we're in the process of launching the lifesteading movement. We're having a live event next spring where we're pulling in experts from all over the world, experts in power production and agriculture, hydroponics, ponds. It's gonna be a super cool event. It's very affordable. Um, and we're gonna begin launching the registration for that here soon. Um, so we're really excited, even things like prepping. Um, if you're a homesteader of any kind, you're gonna wanna be here because it's gonna be a really super neat event. We're gonna house it right here on Ripple Ranch. We'll have up to 100 attendees. Um, it's really gonna be neat. So um, I think that's it for now. Mark Warnke, the goat guy, signing out. Bye.